Blog Talk Radio. Always a choice. No effort, no work, no job, no savings of money. A choice right now between fear and love. just so many millions of tons of junk, unless it enhances the lives of men. Good morning, everybody. Good evening. (laughs) This is Drew Scott, and it is 11.30 p.m. here on Saturday, October 15th. And excuse me if I may be a little befuddled or not speak quite as clearly as I could, suffering from a little sleep deprivation with uh, some of the events that have been going on over the course of the last few days. So I'll do my best to be able to stay with it here and talk a little bit about what's been going on. Uh, I want to make sure everybody knows who may be listening out there that this is a call-in show, and I hope that anybody who may be listening from some of the different Occupy movements around the state may call in and let me know how things and events went in their area. You guys can call in at 1. I don't know if you need to put a 1, but anyway, the number is 858-956-3200. Again, that number here is 858-956-3200. Call and talk about anything you want, anything that you may have on your mind, uh, in particular some of the different Occupy movements that have been going on. Today was a relatively big day for those type of events, and it happened all over the place, globally, not only nationally, not to mention locally down here in southwest Florida. Um, Also, I want to speak quickly before we dive deep into that, related to that, is uh, quite a few members from our area made it up to Washington, D.C., for what ended up, I guess, essentially being a joint rally of the Occupy movement that coincided there along with the pre-scheduled October 2011 get-together protesting the war as we came upon the 10 years of being in Afghanistan. And from all reports, everybody there uh, found it extremely beneficial. It had a very interesting and good time, met all kinds of like-minded people, and had some good conversations. One of our, quite a few of our people there actually are working on a documentary, and uh, they got their camera out there, were able to talk to different people. I guess got interviews with Ralph Nader and Lee Camp, amongst some other people, and looking forward to seeing some of that footage and as, as that moves along. And they were also, I believe it was the Asheville chapter of the Zeitgeist Movement in North Carolina. They got to meet them and run into them there, too. So it was great that there was a few different chapters of the Zeitgeist Movement that went down or up, depending on your location, to Washington, D.C., to be able to partake and increase the numbers and have a good showing there in Washington. So in addition, everybody else had some Zeitgeist people out there. That's good to know. And that that documentary that I'm speaking of actually is Be the Change. We haven't talked about that for a little while on this show. But that is a documentary film that's in the work down here. It's called Be the Change. You can find information on that at bethechangefilm.com as well as at youtube.com slash bethechangefilm. And this is documenting all kinds of different activist movements that are going around and uh, on a local level here in Florida. As well, they were there recording with us today in Fort Myers, in Fort Myers, Florida. There's a couple different events that happened today, both in Fort Myers and in Naples, Florida, and it was a pretty impressive show out uh, that happened on both locations, actually. In Fort Myers, uh, this was going on, this was the second week, I guess you could say, or the second get-together. Last Saturday was the first general assembly, if you will, as it's come to be known, of the Occupy movement, and I took the... um, the time to go up there and see everybody in Fort Myers. I don't spend a lot of time in Fort Myers, but it was nice to get involved with all the people there. And their passions are starting to come out, and lots of people are finally making their voice heard on all these multiple issues that are 
starting to decay at our society today, and people are finally getting tired of it, taking a little bit of time to go out of their way in their normal days to learn more about this and to go out and make their voices heard. And uh, it was kind of odd for me personally as all of this transpired and as I made an attempt to get involved, I ended up finding myself in the middle of some of this Occupy movement in southwest Florida with talking to newspapers, and there's been a fair amount of media with some of the local news channels as well as some of the radio channels. And it's been nice to be able to talk to some of these folks and get some ideas out there and hear how they're interpreting all these things that are going on. Some coverage of the event is a little bit more objective or truthful even than others, but I imagine that's to be expected. But it's at least they're, they can't deny this anymore, and I think this is, shows great homage to what was going on in New York. Unfortunately, I believe that it was necessary for them to do something as drastic as to really camp out in the park and stay there for an extended period of time. Uh, one of the things I heard a lot going around today is that so many people, it was a good week before people really started to hear that this was even happening in our own country. And lots of folks were telling me that they actually saw on international news channels reports on what was happening here before our media actually started to cover it. So if this would have been a one-day protest or even something that happened every uh, every continuously on once a week, that kind of thing, it probably still would never have got any real coverage in the mainstream media. So it's good to know that, well, I'm fortunate to know, I guess, that it takes actually camping out and putting that long of a concerted effort in just to get some attention. But this is now starting to happen, and it's starting to sprout up all over the country and today even spread out further throughout the globe. They've had their own protests, as we all know, going around the globe for quite some time, but today it seemed that it spread in solidarity, if you will, with what has been going on in New York. So this is something that's been happening all around us, and it's been interesting to watch it unfold. Uh, in addition to being up in Fort Myers today, where, like I said, we were actually doing a little bit more recording for the Be the Change film, and we're getting all kinds of really good footage on this. Uh, today was a week after the initial get-together in Fort Myers, so there was a march all throughout the lower downtown area going to multiple different banks. Everybody had different signs and had their different points of view, and I'd say there's probably good, strong 600 people, which is a good amount of people for down here in this neck of the woods. It's a fairly conservative and well-to-do area, and I was wondering how it would be received, and it was also great to see the police were actually fantastic with it. They were actually of a help letting people go around and gave nobody any trouble. Right now we have some brothers and sisters in the park in Fort Myers that are staying overnight in the park. I'm not sure how long they're going to be there, but they're starting up their own little Occupy in Fort Myers. And the authorities are being fine with that. As long as there's no trouble starting, they don't plan on throwing anybody out, kicking anybody out, or doing any problems. So this is pretty nice. And this is taking off also in Naples. It surprised me to see that there are even Facebook events started to pop up in Naples. And after getting done with some of the things in Fort Myers, uh, that, I'm not sure how long that went. And anybody please from Fort Myers that stayed around, call in and let me know what you saw while you were out there. Uh, I know it was really nice, the people I talked to, I didn't get a chance to be right there at the heart of the different locations we went to. I walked the whole route with everybody, but really spent a lot of time talking to different folks along the way. And it was interesting to me that there was about three different people that came up and talked to me while we were all marching that were from the financial industry. I had a guy who said he was a broker for 20-some-odd uh, years and just how he came to see how it all worked slowly but surely, and it made him, it was revolting to him, the things that he had to do, and eventually pulled himself out of that business, as well as a uh, woman who gave me essentially the same story about being from a mortgage broker and doing home loans and things of that nature and all the things that she was taught. And then when she started to really see the effects that this was having on the people that she was signing loans for and how ludicrous the whole system was, and she had to pull herself out of that. So it's nice to see that people from these industries that we are talking about in the financial sector are coming to light and awakening with all of us to this same very fact and are starting to now – I don't want to say take sides, like I said, I'm a little sleepy, lost for words, but take a stand at least and make their voices known on the other side. I also spoke to a gentleman who was 95 years old. He came down 
uh, to the rally in Fort Myers, and he must talk to me for 15 minutes going over how he's seen this kind of thing before, and he so inspired that this is finally happening now and uh, it's, it, how often times do you get a 95 year old man come down to a rally like this and he was in full support of everything I also ran into people that had some physical disabilities who had taken trains multiple different trams just to get themselves down here and some even tried to get to the first event that we had last week which was in the pouring rain so these people are making a big effort and it really means a lot to all of these people out there, the involvement that they're seeing, especially from the younger people. And so I thank everybody who's really taking the time to be involved with this effort. And then we did move down to Naples, as I've been mentioning, and there was a good, for the first get-together in Naples, there was probably a strong 300 people that were marching around the streets down here. We all started at City Hall and had a little discussion there. And people made up their signs and went down, up and down Fifth Avenue, the main street where everybody's eating dinner. It almost kind of seemed like a carnival for some of the people eating dinner on the side of Fifth Avenue. They're taking pictures as we're going by, strumming guitars, singing songs, being happy. And it, once again, the police down in Naples were just great as well. They helped everybody through, made sure traffic was fine. And quite to my surprise was the amount of horns and supports and honks from the ongoing traffic going around, both in Naples and Fort Myers. Uh, again, for those who may hear on podcasts and stuff, this particular area of the woods is quite well-to-do and not generally so inclined to support this type of thing. You would think to put a little bit of a biased view on it, and I need to try to stop doing that. But there was so much support uh, and solidarity of people driving by, sticking their thumbs out, giving thumbs up, happy. I saw a few people even make a couple swipes around. So... Even down here, this kind of thing can take hold. Some of the messages that are starting to evolve from this, such as really once and for all, seeing how detrimental it is, the money influence in our political system and having to get that out at the very start. These these types of issues about getting money out of the system, I can't see as controversial to anybody. Um, one of the main themes that's coming up is the amount of money that corporations can put in to the system and donate and, in fact, manipulate the system. They give tons of money to politicians who and then in turn give all kinds of tax incentives and stimulus money and any different way you can describe ways of getting money to corporations. They'll even invent ways. This is a cyclical circle of money and power and influence that walks in between corporations and government that it was never intended to be. And corporations, they're, although they're legally bound as people from the 14th Amendment, uh, which was meant to help with equal rights for all people, oddly and disturbingly enough. Somehow corporations co-opted that into turning themselves into a legal person and have all the rights that is endowed to a legal person. It seems to me pretty plain and simple that corporations are not people. On that note, I'm going to go ahead and take a call. Somebody's calling in here. Hello. You are on the air. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? Uh, My name is uh, Mike. I was over at the uh, Fort Myers occupation today. Um, oh, where is it? Yeah, yeah. I just, uh, I was actually, I was calling in to say, I think uh, it's kind of interesting. We had an interesting happen. Uh, interesting happen. I was there a couple hours after uh, a lot of the crowd had kind of shaved off, and uh, there was a there was a guy that kind of came over with some um, a bit of a. Uh, uh, I, I would say he 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 thought it was a more of a negative thing that was going on there, and uh, I would say a more well-to-do gentleman and stuff like that. But it was interesting because I actually had a few minutes to talk to him, and I was asking him a couple of questions as far as saying, well, you know, I'm part of the young crowd, and I haven't, you know, I got out of college, I did my thing, and I'm looking for work, and I'm trying to start a business and so forth. And, you know, it's hard for me, and I think a lot of us are all in the same boat. And he had mentioned to me that uh, that it's not necessarily, it's the government's fault for what's going on, things like that. Anyway, to make a long story short on what happened was uh, we ended up having – an interesting conversation because I was asking him about interest rates and, you know, would you be interested in investing in this economy and what do you do? And it kind of gave another side of the approach that this isn't just a problem with people that don't have money, but it's also a problem with people that do have money. So it's kind of interesting that there's other people that are, that are involved in this as well. You know, as far as like uh, the other part that I wanted to mention was the police effort in this area of the country. A lot of our police and firefighters have had a lot of, uh, a lot of things kind of taken away from them as far as cutbacks and things that regard. So uh, everybody essentially in this part of the, part of the uh, 
part of the country is feeling the effects of this issue. And I think that the further we go along with this effort, the more you're going to see that groups that normally would probably be opposed on each other will probably actually start going along and being a part of the same movement. And you're going to find that it's that it really is kind of a 99% versus 1% issue. And uh, I'm basically just very proud of everybody, and I, and I think this is really going to be something great for, for the country as a whole and for the people that are involved. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. I'm glad that you had that kind of experience, too. And th- that's a great way to go about it. Somebody may be a little bit confrontational. Well, ask, how does this affect you? What do you think? Obviously, nobody's having a good time in this economy, so uh, that's terrific that you can open up a dialogue with that. And I agree. I think that a lot of the police officers down there, they're going through the same things that we are. The socioeconomic standards that are being endured by everyone are being endured by everyone. This is affecting everybody in one way or another. So that's good that that actually opened up a dialogue between you guys. Uh, what do you think in the future? Are you going to be staying involved with the things that's happening here in Fort Myers and uh, attending some of the meetings and stuff like that still, or are you just kind of keep an eye out and go down as the bigger things happen? Well, no, I'm I'm absolutely going to be involved in this uh, quite considerably. Um, I am one of the guys that sees this day in and day out. I, I I was a finance guy and with one of the big big firms, like you were talking about, one of the couple of the people you had spoken to earlier today. I had the same experiences with it. Um, and essentially, uh, I happened to graduate college, get out, and learned a bunch of finance and really got it down pat and walked into a financial firm, and it was completely upside down from what they had just been teaching me. So uh, for me, I'm very passionate about this. Uh, you know, I, I really want our country to come back to, to a stance where everyone's feeling good again. So I'm definitely going to be involved in this. I think uh, the one thing that I would like to take further is to start a mobilization effort as far as maybe being more effective in the sense of hurting some of these banks in the pocket. You know, um, uh, I, I've, I've done a couple of things so far to kind of get that wheel in process. Um, of course, I don't want to use this as a as a venue to, you know, speak of what I'm doing specifically, uh, unless it's okay well, with you. But, if you want to, feel yeah. free. Uh, I mean, I know a lot of people are putting forth the concept of, I think, maybe on November 5th or some different date, pulling money out of the banks going yeah. to local credit unions and things of, that, things of that nature. But this is what this uh, this is your platform. If you'd like to, man, feel free. I, I appreciate it. Um, basically, what I've got is I've got bankcrushers.com, and I've got a petition that started. And uh, anytime somebody goes to a credit union and leaves one of these big banks or goes to even a local bank, not as great as a credit union, but, you know, either way, if you leave one of these big banks, uh, go to bankcrushers.com. We've got a petition on the bottom. And... When you sign the petition, it's basically just kind of a running count. So when, when hopefully, what I, the ultimate goal of this whole thing is to have a direct correlation between banking stocks and what we are doing to them. <laughs> if you kind of understand what I mean, uh, sure. so yeah, CEOs yeah. can kind of, you know, CEOs and analysts can kind of look at it and go, well, I guess it's the Wall Street people that are hurting us. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, kind of go from there. <laughs> so, um, you know, that's. That's kind of my mobilization effort. I think when these big bankers walk by the Occupy Wall Street crowd, if we've got something waiting for them on the other side on Monday morning, uh, they might be a little less prone just to walk by with their with a smug look in their face, so to speak. So um, that's what bankcrushers.com uh, is pretty much pretty much trying to mobilize, get this effort going. I like the idea, and I encourage everybody to take a look at that site. Um, let me ask you this, man. A lot of what I get, of not necessarily seek, seeked it out, but media's been sticking the microphones in my face. And what's this about? What's this about? Well, what, what are you guys trying to say? What's your main point? And while letting them know that something that we're all figuring out, in your mind, A and B kind of, what do you see as some of the points that are starting to bubble to the surface here? And what would you like some of the main points to finally clear out to be as we get more specific moving forward? Well, I think one of the main points is that there really is a 99% versus 1% situation going on in the country. The greed or the super rich, shall I say, has exponentially grown, I'd say, within the past 10 years. And it has become way too separatist between us. Um, They've lost – they're completely out of touch with the people underneath. Uh, being a, a finance person and watching how things work, uh, you have to have money flowing through the economy. When 
when people that are of wealth are well informed, they keep economies flowing. When they become uninformed and they become fearful, which I've seen quite quite consistently amongst people that have a lot of wealth, they get scared and then they stop spending, which in turn creates issues with them keeping money in reserves, which creates a job issue, which filters all the way down. So I would say one of the fundamental purposes is that we have a greed separation and we need to get get that situated. Uh, the two other issues that I would say are going on are the, the war effort that's going on right now. It seems like the country is going into a division as far as saying that we don't need to be there anymore. And um, and the corruption that is going into our elected officials. A lot of people also at the same time are saying that they don't want – they want more transparency. They don't want – the the uh, the money in the campaigning and things of that regard. So I would say the, the the three big things that I got out of today showing up were the uh, banking industry issues, these uh, which are the separations between the super rich and everybody else in the country, the uh, uh, the I'm kind of blanking out here. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> some uh, yeah, yeah and we're yeah. like I think you're agreeing a little bit with what I had said starting off with that I was seeing too, which I concur is getting the money out of politics. And then in between you had mentioned the wars, which uh, um, I don't know how many people has been real busy lately. We just put another 100 combat ready troops into Uganda today as if we just haven't forgotten and fallen asleep about Libya. Now we're going to go ahead and start somewhere else. And our, what's your personal mindset on the wars? I think, you know, uh, from anybody on, who listens to this show and is of this kind of mindset from the Zeitgeist Movement, we're by definition almost against any kind of aggression in war whatsoever. And I think even some of the people that may have been more war-hungry, for lack of a better term, are even seeing now that it's not as economically viable. Even if it comes down to it, it comes down to your pocketbook, that's when they'll finally start to turn off the spigot. Do you see more of a consensus coming along those lines, that that's part of what needs to be shut down sure. as well? Sure. Um Unfortunately, I think uh, I, I, I've done a lot of studying abroad uh, through my life, and um, it's funny because we all got sold on terrorism. And I think yeah. that a war like this, you don't you don't fight a war like this. You know, basically, you don't show up with with the, with the army to fight a group of people that are going to take cheap shots, so to speak. Um, so, in my eyes, I said back in 2002 personally to a lot of people that know me that all it would take is a good SEAL team and some good intelligence, and this thing would be a done deal. And sure enough, 10 years later, <laughs> a good SEAL team and some intelligence really kind of cut the head of the snake off. So my 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 take is uh, the real war in the world right now is, is a financial war. Um, a good friend of mine told me a long time ago, you ever want to really hurt somebody, you hit them in the pocket. Um, this, these wars... I just don't find anything in them, uh, especially now that even a third of our our, our military population uh, is questioning now why we're there. Uh, so when you get that kind of a situation going on, you know, it, it's time to shut it down. Um, I really was never for the war. I agree with you. We're in a time now where there are other ways to deal with things and other factions and making things happen. So um, me personally, um, I actually have a family member that's getting ready to ship out. Uh, he He joined because there was no jobs. There was no money or anything else. And uh, so he went in. So I, I have a very personal um, issue with what's going on. In addition to it, I never agreed with them in the first place. But uh, I agree. I, I think that, that these wars are, are an issue. Um, I think if you look at some of the balance sheets, that we are almost directly correlated with the amount of money spent in the war effort versus why we are underneath in, in a big deficit right now. There's a direct correlation there. You see a big chunk of it in the war effort. So um, that's my opinion on it, uh, and uh, you know, heck, one last stat I can throw out for you real quick uh, with the idea oh, yeah, of the please. terrorism thing. Uh, yeah, we lost we, talk, we lost 3,000 people on September 11th. It was a horrible, tragic event. They they they, they got a good cheap shot in. Uh, we decided to create the homeland security. We've taken away a lot of freedom from people. We've lost uh, soldiers. I think it's like 4,500 between Afghanistan and Iraq so far. Um, over the past 10 years, we've lost 120,000 people due to texting and driving. Where's the Department of Homeland Security on that one? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So um, yep. that's, 
I mean, it's a sarcastic statement, and by all means, I'm not trying to downplay that there's a terrorist task force that needs it or things like that, but let's get logical here, guys. we got problems in this country that are much worse than what's going on out there. So what are you doing, <laughs> you know? So that's my take. Yeah, uh, I I couldn't agree more. It's, uh, there's all kinds of crazy stats that I've seen too. That I'd like literally more people will die, you know, falling down steps or something than from terrorism any given year. <laughs> so right. yeah, it's definitely time to rethink some of this. And I think it actually some of the war stuff ties into the corporate side of it. With uh, I I try to explain to people when I express them against the war, I'll instantly get hit with you know you're against your country or something like that or against the troops. I fully I have so much sympathy for the troops. It makes me so sick that they're going to do these things. They're not fully aware of why. They're they're just trying to be, you know, patriotic or looking for jobs or something of this nature. And with all the money that goes over there, on my way up and back to the rallies today, I see military people out on the streets with booths collecting money. Even with all the money that we spend and everything that we do, they still have to go and collect money in a booth to help get by on this kind of thing. It's just, I think, beyond reproach. And we now, because we're not going to implement any kind of a draft, or else these wars would probably stop the very next day. Corporations have found a way to be profitable here, where more and more of our military activity is actually by privatized armies with uh, Blackwater and contractors of this nature. So we're even turning war into a pro outside of the profiteering that takes place when it comes to the resources of the land that's gained or occupied or whatever you want to call it, just direct fighting and training in the war is now being taken place by these corporations. So this is all stuff that I think is really starting to tie together nicely once and for all, if not unfortunately. Yeah, I, I agree with you 100%. I, and I think uh, just one, one added thing to what you were mentioning, and maybe you agree with me on this, is that it's almost like, like the labeling has become so bad in this country, and we've lost logic in a certain way, that when it's like what you said, that, that if you're opposed to the war, people automatically label you as a terrorist or somebody that is anti-American or anti, uh, you know, our military, and that's not the case. It, it's really got, it comes down to the, to, to the fact of that it's the war effort, our most precious asset in the country is being sent over to waste money and risk being killed for something that really isn't it, 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 you don't deal with this problem in this way. You don't go start a war with something in this way. So I agree with you in the sense of that, it's, it, it, that, that, that we need to be out and in the sense of, you know, uh, what, I, what bothers me about it is the fact that you automatically get jumped on for saying or labeled when you don't like the war effort with all of these other things attached to it when it's really not the case. I think a lot of people in this country support our military, and, and, and God bless them for it. Uh, and I think that even adds more strain to the sense of we want to bring them home because we think that this is this is not worth it. And what are you doing with our most precious assets? Bring them home. Let's get them fed. Let's get them back in shape. Let's let's you know let's get them happy again. You know they don't need to be missing Christmases and Thanksgivings and Hanukkahs and everything else. You know because because they need to be walking into empty houses with random people. You know so uh, in my eyes, yeah, yeah, I agree with you. It's, it's pretty. Pretty pretty bad situation right now, and I'm hoping that our movement can can definitely start feeling some of this stuff to to really make something happen. So, uh, I yep, yeah, and I do believe that's what's starting to come together. And I appreciate you calling in, brother. I'm going to have to let you go. We're down to about a minute and a half here. We I do appreciate you calling in and check out the future. Feel free to call in and let us know what's going on with your site there and how things are progressing. You got it. I appreciate it, guys. Remember, bankcrushers.com. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Take care. Well, there you go. Um, some of the things that are happening down here in Southwest Florida. We're getting ready to sign off for the night. I did want to mention real quick uh, somebody who's been very near and dear to many people in the Zeitgeist movement down here in Southwest Florida. A wonderful lady by the name of Ellen Peterson has passed away at the age of 87 on October 14, 2011. Ellen was very kind to always let uh, the Zeitgeist movement come in and occupy her, um, her her place, her nature preserve, essentially, that she has here in southwest Florida. She's been around for quite a while. She actually, being in this area back in the 70s, has interacted with Jacques here and there. This is a very wonderful kind of people that, unfortunately, 
leave us, but when they do they leave us, they leave us much better off for having known them. So we just wanted to pay respect for Ellen this evening as well. On that note, everybody, it's time for us to get going. I appreciate you listening. Our next show will be October 29th, um, right before Halloween there, Saturday night, October 29th, not next week, but the following week. And check out, uh, we have our town hall as well happening October 27th, Thursday. You can find that on Facebook. Take care, guys. You have been listening to the Zeitgeist Movement Southwest Florida Blog Talk Radio Weekly Broadcast. Show archives and broadcast times can be found on our show page at blogtalkradio.com slash zeitgeistmovementswfl.